In this video, I'm going to discuss the mold markers on the organic acids test from Great Plains Laboratory, along with three ways we're commonly exposed to molds, and I'll also discuss some treatment suggestions for those dealing with toxic mold. Before I begin, I just want to remind you that the main reason I put together these videos is to help people with different types of autoimmune conditions and other health issues better understand the test results so that they can find and remove their triggers, correct any underlying imbalances, and feel great again. I need to let you know that this video is not meant to be used as medical advice or as a recommended treatment protocol, and it isn't a replacement for consulting with a competent healthcare practitioner. The organic acids test from Great Plains Laboratory offers a comprehensive metabolic snapshot of a patient's overall health. It provides an evaluation of intestinal yeast and bacteria, markers for vitamin and mineral levels, oxidative stress, neurotransmitter levels, indicators of detoxification, and is the only organic acids test to include markers for oxalates. Many people underestimate the negative impact that mold can have on their health, but the mycotoxins produced from mold can cause a lot of health issues and can sometimes lead to debilitating symptoms. Not all molds produce mycotoxins, but over 300 types of mycotoxins are known to be produced by molds. And the concern isn't just with humans, as mold can affect the livestock as well, which of course can indirectly affect humans. Aflatoxin, vomitoxin, zearalenone, fumonisin, and ochratoxin are the most significant mycotoxins affecting the livestock population. Grains such as corn, wheat, and barley may be easily contaminated with mold, which is how the livestock get these mycotoxins. So how is mold toxic to your health? First of all, it's important to understand that not everyone has a negative reaction to mold. Genetics does play an important role with regards to how people will react to mold. HLA is part of the immune system involved in something called antigen presentation. And there are certain HLA genotypes that make people more susceptible to the mycotoxins and thus cause numerous symptoms. The reason why people with these genes are more likely to react to mold is because having one of these HLA genotypes will reduce the person's ability to clear the mycotoxins produced by the mold, which in turn is responsible for the symptoms people will experience. Exposure to mold and mold components is well known to trigger inflammation, allergies and asthma, oxidative stress, and immune dysfunction in both human and animal studies. Most of the time, we are exposed to mold through one of the following three ways. So eating contaminated foods. Mycotoxins usually get into the food in the field or during storage, and this is why shipping, handling, and storage practices of foods need to be considered. While most people get exposed to a lot of mycotoxins through eating grains along with other foods such as nuts, we also need to keep in mind that animals consuming feeds which are contaminated with mycotoxins can produce meat and milk that contain these toxic residues. Then there's skin contact with mold. Sometimes there is unusual growth of commensal species that is normally present on human skin or in the gut. And the inhalation of mycotoxins. And this typically is the problem when someone is living in a water damaged home or works or goes to school where there is toxic mold. As a result, if you feel worse while at home and feel better at work or school, then this is a good sign that there is a mold problem in your home. And of course, the reverse is true as well. If you are a stay-at-home mom, then you might notice that all of your symptoms improve when you go on a vacation. And while the positive feeling of going on vacation might play a role in you feeling better, if extreme symptoms disappear while away from your home, then you really should consider hiring an indoor air inspector. On the organic acid test, there are three main markers that can relate to toxic mold. The first one is marker number two, also known as 5-hydroxymethylfuroic acid. This is a metabolite produced by Aspergillus and possibly other fungal species. Marker number four is furin 25 dicarboxylic acid, which is also produced by Aspergillus and perhaps other fungal species. Marker number five is furan carbonyl glycine, which is yet another metabolite produced by aspergillus and possibly other fungal species. If one or more of these markers are positive, then you might want to consider doing further testing for mold, such as a mycotox test from Great Plains Laboratory. And it's important to mention that if all three of these markers are negative, this does not rule out toxic mold. As a result, if someone thinks they might have a problem with toxic mold, they should once again consider doing a test such as a Great Plains Mycotox test. Before discussing the treatment options for toxic mold, if you like this video so far, please do me a favor and click the like button below. 
let's now talk about some of the different treatment options for toxic mold. Of course, you want to eliminate the source of the mold. This is the most important thing that needs to be done, as if you skip this step, then you will not get rid of the mold toxicity. This might sound like common sense, but some people will try to do some of the other things I'm about to mention, but they won't do anything to remove the source of the mold. Of course, before eliminating the source of the mold, you need to confirm that there is a mold problem either at home, at work, or at school. And once this has been confirmed, then the next step is usually either do mold remediation or do everything you can to avoid the source. If remediation isn't an option, or if you choose to remediate first and if it doesn't help with the mold toxicity, then the next step is to avoid the source. At times, this can seem like an extreme measure to take, as it might involve moving to a different home, quitting your job, or attending a different school. But if remediation doesn't provide a solution to the mold toxicity problem, then the best option is to do whatever is necessary to completely avoid the source. You want to get rid of the mycotoxins from your body. And I'm going to talk about both prescription medications and natural treatment methods. So let's start with prescription drugs. Cholestyramine. So this is an FDA approved medication used to lower elevated levels of cholesterol. Dr. Richie Shoemaker accidentally discovered how cholestyramine can bind to mycotoxins in the small intestine along with cholesterol and bile salts. However, you don't want to take cholestyramine with food. The recommended dosage is 9 grams taken 4 times per day on an empty stomach. Some forms of cholestyramine include aspartame and as a result you might want to consider getting a compounded form. Constipation is a common side effect and so you want to make sure to stay well hydrated and consume plenty of fiber. So let's go ahead and discuss some natural treatment options for binding mycotoxins. Bentonite clay, zeolite, and activated charcoal. So these natural agents seem to be effective for binding to aflatoxins, which we're commonly exposed to through the food. But according to Dr. Shoemaker, these aren't effective when binding to other mycotoxins. And so while you can always start by taking these natural binding agents, if you don't notice a significant improvement in your symptoms, then you will want to consider taking cholestyramine. Glutathione. So Glutathione is the master antioxidant in the body and it plays an important role in phase 2 detoxification. The CYP450 enzymes convert mycotoxins into reactive intermediates and glutathione as transferase catalyzes the conjugation of these intermediates with reduced glutathione which in turn leads to the excretion of the mycotoxin. As a result, you want to make sure you have healthy glutathione levels. You could take a precursor to glutathione such as N-acetylcysteine, also known as NAC, or an acetylator or liposomal form of glutathione. An air purifier. So although some good quality HEPA air purification systems might be able to help reduce airborne mycotoxins, if someone is dealing with chronic inflammatory response syndrome due to toxic mold exposure, then getting an air purification system alone usually won't be sufficient. There is some evidence that ozone can degrade certain mycotoxins. Just as is the case with an air purification system, Having an ozone machine probably won't provide a permanent solution as you need to remove the source of the mold. Address marcons. So these are strains of staphylococci bacteria and they colonize the nasopharynx. The problem with marcons is that they can create biotoxins and this in turn can further increase the inflammation associated with the chronic inflammatory response syndrome associated with toxic mold. As a result, if this is an issue, then it needs to be addressed in order to overcome the toxic mold problem. Eradication of marcons is typically done through the use of a compound and nasal spray. The final steps involve addressing the inflammatory process and hormone imbalances associated with the mold toxicity problem. While removing the source of the mold exposure and using binders to eliminate mycotoxins can help greatly, this doesn't always suppress the inflammatory response and it also won't address the hormone imbalances. If you enjoyed watching this video, then please click on the like button below. And if you want to learn more about how to read your organic acids test results, you'll want to check out my organic acids overview video where I discuss the entire organic acids test in detail.